Right, now before we go into this section, uh, other part of arrays, you must remember that I did a mis make a mistake over here in this button click event. I store NO, I had K there instead of the store number. Because when we found the highest and reset, our store number was going to be that box number. K is the box number, and we kept it safe over there in an integer called our store number if the, bo the, if the value inside that box was the highest. So that has to be that, and then it was fine. Now, the next program we're going to uh, talk about or worry about, or should I say, things about arrays is searching and sorting. That is what we have to know about. The removing duplicates and inserting and deleting from an array or into an array, that is grade 12 work. So the searching and sorting is for grade 11. Now we're going to start off with binary search. Well, basically, what we want to do is look for items in an array. And we're going to go through each box one at a time and look for an item, okay? So if, if I want to find, say, um, this word, uh, no, let's say we want to find W, uh, just, just call it W. We want to find W. And the person enters a small letter W. And that is a capital letter. Obviously, the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we convert to uppercase or for, the, for strings or uppercase for characters. So we convert this to uppercase, that lot to uppercase, and then we'll be able to find it. Not so. You can imagine we're going to go from one to the last box, looking through all the boxes. But here's the thing. If we find the match in like the first or the second or the third box even, do we want the processor to go all the way right to the end? No. Good programming practices says no. We do not tie the processor out. The processor's got lots of other jobs to do as well. So we make sure the processor stops when it finds a match. And we do that using a while. A while loop. And a while loop will test to see um, <coughs> test um, certain things. Our while loop is going to hold the counter. We're going to have a counter called while our count is less than, in this case, 8. Can we see we have a counter? We have 8 boxes inside the array. So while our count is less than 8, we're going to go and check for a match. If ARR box number R count is equal to, <coughs> if we're looking for a capital W, then of course we're going to have to uppercase here. Eh? So if uppercase ARR count, ARR, the ray number, box number, R count, now R count is going to be like our K value. But guess what? If R count is a local variable, especially, we have to set it equal to naught before we start. <coughs> but another thing <coughs> is that we're going to have a problem because we have to increment R count so that it can at least start at 1. Because there is no box number 0 here in this array. And by the way, you can get arrays with box number zeros. You can get that. But there's no box number 0 in this array. So we remember that. Now, take note of the fact that this is inside the while loop. If we find a match, then what? We've got a bit of a problem. How do we stop this loop? It's only got one condition. We use what is called a Boolean flag. We can call it BFound. We set BFound equal to false to start off with. Okay, we're setting it equal to false to start off with. And if we find a match, then we set BFound equal to true. 
That means that we can actually stop the loop if B found is true. Not so? So in this while statement here, we can add another condition, but we have to use and, so that if one of the conditions is false, then the loop will stop. So while our count is less than 8 and B found equals false, well, we're going to increment a counter, check if that is equal to whatever we want, then we'll say, okay, B found is true. The loop will then stop. But what else do we want to do when we find a match? Why do we want to find the match? Maybe we want to do something with it. I don't know. In the case of this program, well, this one here, we just want to get the position of the item that matches. You know, we're going to set the position of the item to an integer, say so rpos equals r count. Remember, r count is the box number. You can, you don't have to use r count. You use, can use k, you can use m, you can use o, you can use any variable name you please. But it'll be an integer. And this r pos is the position. So now we know the position of the array that holds the one we want, you know. So we basically stop the processor right there at box number three if it was a W that we were looking for. So do you get this concept? This is the linear search that you need to know about. The fact that we are getting a Boolean flag, initializing a counter, and then while that counter is less than eight and while our Boolean flag is false, we'll increment our counter to go to the next box. We'll ask the question if that particular box is equal to what we want, and if it is, then we'll say B found equals true and R pos equals count. But if it's not, the while loop will continue. So there's nothing else left here in this while loop. That's all. Wrapped up between begin and end, of course. So now we can move on to some activities on that, and that's explaining what we did here. Okay. Of course, if B, flat, if B found is true, then we can display the name. Otherwise, we can say the search is not found. <coughs> so that is searching for items into an array. Of course, we will um, do some activities. But here we come to sorting. Now, of course, they didn't talk about binary search here, just linear search. In the sorting of arrays, it's quite an easy method. In fact, it's the, the simplest thing of all. And to explain how sorting works would be another lesson, so we will do that another time.